Hey guys, Drew the Goose Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be sending some raw coins into PCGS and we're going to make some predictions before we send them. So let's get this video started and let's show you guys some coins. So our friend Tyler McManus sent us 12 raw coins to send into PCGS. And what this video allows us to do is to make predictions based on these coins before we send them in, just to see how accurate or inaccurate we are when we get them back. So without further ado, let's show you guys these raw coins. Make sure to comment below what you think the grade is as well. Alrighty guys, the first coin I want to show you today is this 1976 Kennedy half dollar. So it's raw as you know. It's got really nice album toning on both sides of the coin. There is some friction here by the face. And then on the reverse, there is some kind of light slide marks in the field. It's kind of hard for me to pick up. Still really nice and reflective. I think it's a decent coin, but there is some wear on the coin. If I could try to zoom in or share with you what that might look like. So if you look a little bit towards the back of the cheek, or the, where the cheek starts, there is a little bit of gray there, a little bit of an issue. That's just from circulation, but, you know, I think the grade personally, I think it would come back as an AU58, but I'd love to know what you guys think of this coin down below, so make sure to comment. The next coin I want to show you guys is a really reflective 1921 Morgan dollar. Definitely tough to find reflective, tough to find proof-like, but there are some problems with this coin from what I can see. So hairlines, which are kind of hard to describe, is that their lines going across and they're also going down and they're all in the same patch of area. Sometimes with polished lines, they're all going in the same area and they're all parallel, none of them ever cross. But I could see lines on this coin going like this and then going like that, especially in the fields in front of the face. It's gonna be very tough to show you guys, but this coin definitely has been wiped and that's basically how hairlines get on a coin. Someone uses a brush or they use kind of like a, a towel or something just to try to take out the imperfections and make the coin look a little bit more shiny or clear. And so I would give this coin a grade of unk details. I just don't think that it would come back as, uh, you know, a straight grade. Maybe someone would call it a 63 or 62. There are a lot of hits on the coin as well, but those hairlines hold it back for me. Next coin I want to show you, it's kind of hard to pick this one up. It's a 1939 Proof Washington Quarter. What you got to look for on proofs is hairlines. Hairlines are the biggest issues when it comes to these coins. And for me, there's hairlines kind of underneath in God We Trust, which is, uh, you know, pretty intense hairlines there. And I use two different lights when I'm trying to see these coins. I use one, which is, uh, you know, a small little desk lamp that a lot of the coin graders use. And I also use just a cell phone light. So definitely a lot of hairlines in the fields on this coin. Uh, you're, if you're going 65 or 66, you're going to want as little hairlines as possible, especially in the fields or on the high points. This one definitely has some haze. It definitely has also a little bit um, of those hairlines. So I would give this coin personally a proof 64. I do think that it's a nice coin, but I do think also it does have a few things that it can improve on. Someone says hairlines are a bad thing on business strikes. They are because they weren't from the mint. They were mainly from somebody after the fact messing with the coin. So a business strike, if it gets its hairlines, most of the time it was someone that wiped it or used a brush. But when you're talking about hairlines on a proof, most times that comes from the mint just because they were so tough and it was they weren't as they're very delicate with proofs but they were um, very hard to keep pure and really nice and wholesome in terms of gray just because the fields are so touchy and the fields uh, needed to be preserved very well for it to be get a high grade so a lot of times when you look at a proof 61 or proof 62 um, washington quarter or proof walker look for the hairlines because they're always going to be on there and if they're not it's probably a higher grade and those always straight grade just because they knew those hairlines came from the mint. 
they knew most of them didn't come from somebody messing with the coin. So this is a 1969 Kennedy half. So the collector that wanted to send this in, he thought it was nicer on the obverse. You can see there's not a whole lot of issues on the cheek. A few little light hits in the hair there. When you flip it over, for me and for what you have to look for is these hits right on the shield. There's a lot of hits on the shield. There's one hit that I can recollect right here in the wing. Definitely too many hits to call it more than a gem. 65, it's got decent luster to the coin, but for me, that's all I would call it. Nothing better, nothing worse. I think he was aiming for a little bit better just because it was a nicer obverse, but for me, that holds it back. It might come back at 66, but once again, I'd love to hear what you guys think. The next coin is this 1880s Morgan. A really nice flashy coin, as most ADSs are. I try to pick up as much as I can here. So this one, incredible luster as most San Francisco Mint coins, especially early on. Really nice cheek there. A few kind of slide marks from it being at a flip. Try to buy the best flip possible when you're housing your coins just because if there's stuff in it or junk on it, it can end up just being used to scratch a coin. Really lightly, but nothing that would put in a details grade, but still... When graders are looking at, you know, a 65 plus to a 66, sometimes they can get, be really anal about it. So this coin, I said it would be a 65 personally. There is a little coin roll on the cheek towards the back by the ear. Almost impossible to pick up with this camera. But just a small imperfection for me. If that was clear, I think this coin would definitely be a 66. But... Hey, maybe it comes back at 66. That would be wonderful. And uh, I, I enjoy being wrong, especially when it comes back higher than what I was expecting. The next is a little bit of a tougher coin to get in gem and higher. This is a 99O. I know that 99s and six, 99 O's and 64, they come back basically, uh, you know, $130, $140 coins. But in gem, it's probably double than that. So when you take a look at... The cheek, the cheek is really nice. The strike is actually surprisingly really, surprisingly really nice. Kind of tripping over my words here. But when you take a look at the fields as well, it's very nice and, and clear. There's a few little chatter marks in the fields. And that, for me, would hold it back from it being any higher than um, a 65. But I think that the luster is really nice. And it's got a little haze to the coin, but I do think it's probably a 65 plus by today's standards. And... Uh, like I, like I said again, guys, I'd love to hear what you guys think below about this coin. But it is fabulous. Tyler picked out some incredible pieces for us to show you and also submit. So we have two more proof Washington quarters to show off in this video. This one, of all three of them, has the most intense hairlines. So hairlines are coming all the way across the coin in the fields. And it's really hard to show you guys and pick up. But hopefully this video kind of balances it all out. A little haze on the reverse as well. But when I was looking at this coin, I thought it would be like a proof 64, maybe a proof 63, if not details. Sometimes the hairlines are self imposed by somebody else that's a dealer trying to remove some imperfections. But still a neat coin. Definitely fit in someone's set if they're looking for proofs, uh, especially the inexpensive ones. So the next coin has a lot of hairlines also. This one uh, is 1940. I think I just showed off the 39 or the 38. So I might be getting a few of these mixed up. But this one's got some hairlines also and some kind of muddiness in the fields. It's still a decent coin, but I was kind of getting in the same range here. Just the hairlines are too extensive for me for it to be any higher than a proof 63 or 64. And uh, the haziness on the reverse isn't really nice that either. But I know that Tyler has submitted a lot of proof stuff with us. And he's never been disappointed when, he got, when he's got it back. And uh, we'll see exactly how those come back and hopefully show you guys on the other side. The next one I want to show you is this 1945. And it was struck off center, as you can see. I think it's probably struck 5% off center. And if you take a look kind of on the cheek, it has a lot of striations right there. And there's little striations out in the field. 
little softness there, so there might be some friction. Not sure what they would kind of call this, but I think it would be at least a 64 by today's standards. Really nice Gemmy Luster, but just too many, uh, like I said, too many kind of friction marks, too many slide marks. Then we got some nice luster on the reverse, nothing problem there. Here's a little neat one. This is an 1884 O Morgan dollar. This one I was looking at, I think it's probably a 63 plus. The luster's not super full, but it has a really nice kind of rainbow color to the obverse, as you can see there. Yeah, I was leaning more on a 63 plus just because of the kind of the severity of the hits in the fields, a little bit lighter on the strike. The luster's nice. And that toning should give it that plus grade. So 63 plus is kind of my perspective on this coin. I think it's still pretty nice. And I think Tyler will be happy with it, especially with a true view. The, the coins with the true views really do stand out, especially when it has some unique character to it. Here's a little bit of a tougher coin, especially for the Franklin folks. So this is a 1950 proof Franklin half. Not as many hairlines on the high points or in the fields. That proof luster is really phenomenal and strong. Has a few little light ticks, especially on the face and on the head. But I call this coin personally a proof 66. No cameo to the coin, sadly, but definitely some nice detail and very few marks on the coin. So that one should come back nice and possibly get him a good profit. Who knows? It just depends on how good he has into that coin. I know sometimes those are just really tough to buy, especially raw. And we have this 82S Morgan dollar. I mean, take a look at that cheek. Take a look at the fields. I mean, phenomenal. This one I was leaning towards a 66 plus. The luster is really strong. And so is the cheek. And so is kind of everything going out here. You can't even see any imperfections. There's one light kind of scrape on the, on the cheek. But it was not big enough for me to say that it would be a 65. I think it's at least a 66. And then when you finally flip it over, it's got this really nice flashiness to the reverse. Strong strike. No problems in the field barely except for a little bit of chatter down by the left wing. But thank you guys for letting me show you these coins. I know you think they're phenomenal. Like I said, I'd love to hear your comments down below because sometimes you guys know better than me. And we're going to see what PCGS says. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like. Make sure to comment what you think the grades are on these coins just because it means a lot to me and to Casey. And also subscribe if you're new because we're coming out with videos every single week and we want you guys to be a part. We'll see you guys in the next video.